Hey everybody, Camden here. This is going to be my first main episode. The one that I've been uploading for two or three days won't even process. It just sits there. It's kind of funny. The members of Patreon will see what I mean when it's there. It's taking a long time even to put on Dropbox, but that's probably because of my frame rate. But this one's honestly even better. It gets into the esoteric, it gets into the aliens, it gets into spirituality. It, I, I think you guys are going to love it. So... A lot of you subscribers here will feel that they're very spiritual, that they, you know, whether it's Christianity or, or just, you know, a spirituality aspect, new age type of thing, you feel that you have a certain perception. You see the synchronicities in the world around you. You see the deeper meanings in things. And I don't mean, you know, belief in Jesus or, or specific religions. I'm talking about a connection to the creator spirit, the collective consciousness, right? But you also see that a lot of people around you don't seem to have that same innate insight and and a, and plain sight, right? Today, they seem to be, you know, obsessed with memes. Remember that word? Uh, obsessed with the shallow, vapid reality TV, romanticizing of Hollywood films and trying to find their own main character inside themselves, right? We're beginning to find some science, you know, trust the science, I guess, right? Uh, behind why that disconnect and that dismantling of a spirituality could really be happening, okay? And it shocked me. It makes perfect sense to me, too. But we're going to start here with a article from the Alien Scientist. It's April 21st of this year. It's about the TR3B. It seems to be becoming more and more credible. Everyone knows about it. The low energy nuclear reactor anti gravity machine. Okay. But what I want to focus on here is a blurb at the end. A anti gravity, not so crazy after all. Henry Wallace uh, had the first patents on anti gravity. He, according to his patents, bodies made of carefully chosen material generate an energy field when placed in rapid relative motion. This field is not electromagnetic and was christened by the inventor as a kinematic force field. If this kinematic field is made to undulate, a secondary gravitational field is produced, which can neutralize gravity. If in one kinematic machine, a pair of brass wheels, alloys, like a gyroscope, are mounted in close-fitting air gaps between a massive structural support formed from steel. They are driven to rotation by jets of compressed air or nitrogen. When it gets to about 20,000 RPMs, polarization of the spin nuclei of the alloyed metal occurs. If one wheel is balanced on a knife edge, it will start to oscillate under the influence of the other. If the spinning wheels are rotated about another axis, a secondary gravitational field is created which reduces the wheel's weight. Sufficiently strong, it literally will create localized areas of a gravitational shielding. Real reasoning behind some anti-grav, polarization of atoms, it makes sense. Although Wallace's patents were initially ignored as cranky, Observers believe his invention is now under serious but secret investigation by the, pay attention, military authorities in the USA. Dave has an episode or two recorded, we're working on getting to me, that are going to go some here, some on Patreon, but they really explain and corroborate this military authority very well seems to be something that he's mentioned before, Advanced Group 6. Now, what is Advanced Group 6? Well, let's go to their website, right? AdvancedGroup6.com. Nevada, United States, copyright 1995. Okay, very plain. I've set it here not to redirect me. Uh, on a lot of browsers, it will redirect you to Lockheed Skunk Works. That's weird. Why? Okay. If anything, that's some substantiation of this being a good, real website. I mean, 1995, right? So, okay, kind of debunked old, maybe. No, let's go to the inspect element here. They go to security. Literally, they have signed on for a new SSL, single sign-on login. Friday, July 9th, 2021. This isn't a defunct website. This is this is active. People are using this to log on to something. I've not uh, tricked it into letting me log in. It, it's got good security, right? Uh, but you can, in that inspect element, still see traffic. Minimal, but traffic. People are going to it. People are logging into it. Now, that Skunk Works redirect is interesting. Uh, Advanced Group 6 seems to 
have been a adversary of a lot of things. More specifically, even a brilliant thing that we found. I appreciate it, Dave. The Challenger astronauts were big uh, opponents of Advanced Group Six and their deep state military ongoings. Right now. We know the trauma that happened with the Challenger, but we're not even stipulating that those people were gone here. We have some solid, you know, pictures and then LinkedIn pages. Michael J. Smith, a professor emeritus at the College of Engineering, Wisconsin Madison. That looks a lot like that dude. That's not all. Dick Scobie looks a lot like Richard Scobie here, a CEO at Cows and Trees. The Krista McAfee probably the most prolific of these Sharon A. McAfee noticed she's the only one that changed her name, which is interesting. I said prolific, right? She's a member of a Bosquette Holstein PLLC in Syracuse. She also looks a lot like her. Judith Resnick, an American engineer, looks a lot like this Judith Resnick of a tenured professor these people were outspoken opponents of a lot of things. They, they, honest to God, seem to maybe have been dealt with and then given somewhere else to be, and given somewhere else to be controlled, uh, given somewhere else to be provided for, sure, but changed careers. It's an interesting connection, and it, it was wild to find. Now, Allegedly, this advanced group six, it works on this kind of military, right? Anti-grav, but they also seem to be from Singularity Hub here right now, uh, a month ago. A new brain implant automatically detects and kills pain in real time. How? It works with a chip that in the front of the brain, remember that, up here in the front of the brain, it works as a tag team spy sleeper agent. The spy listens to electrical chatter in the brain region that processes pain and then sends messages to the sleeper agent computer chip in the front of the brain, which then automatically triggers a light beam to stimulate the region, activating the neurons that can override pain signals. Sends a light beam to stimulate blocking pain signals. Light seems to be an effective tool in a lot, a lot of things. And we're going to get into it here just on that, just to give you some, some, whoa, what on that light beam, you know, front of the brain. We're going to, we've recently found a department of defense, uh, CIA video explaining to investors. We don't really know who a group of people about something called a VMAT2 gene. It's interesting. Some of you may have heard of it. It, it is commonly referred to as a God gene and I'll talk intermittently in the video. It's only a couple minutes long, but listen to this. Excuse me. On the left over here, we have individuals who are religious fun fundamentalists, religious fanatics, and this is the expression, uh, RT-PCR, real-time PCR uh, expression of the VMAT2 gene. Over here, we have individuals. So, so, so let, let me complete. So over here, we have uh, individuals who are not particularly uh, fundamentalists, not particularly religious, and you can see there's a, a much reduced uh, expression of, of this particular gene, the, the VMAT2 uh, gene. Uh, so here you'll see this graph. This is the graph you're showing on the screen. On the left, like he said, is individuals, he calls them fanatics, fundamentalists. They have this VMAT2 gene, and it expresses itself. Now, the graph on the right shows those people that would label themselves non-religious, non-fundamentalist. The same kind of reactions in the brain don't occur. The people that have this VMAT2 gene seem to be having something go on in their brain, and we'll explain it, that isn't happening in other people, right? And so listen to this next part. It's our, our hypothesis for the development of, of, of this um, approach. Uh, so what you, what you see here is by, by, by spreading this virus, we're going to eliminate individuals from donning on a bomb vest and going into a market and blowing up. You heard what he said? By spreading this V-I-R-U-S, we're going to stop individuals from going on a bombastic marketplace fanatic rant and rave. Uh, okay. 
a weird word to use in 2005. Why? How? By dismantling this VMAT2 gene? By taking it away from people? We'll continue. So our, our hypothesis is that these are fanatical people, uh, that they have overexpression of the VMAT2 gene, and that by vaccinating them against this, we'll eliminate this behavior. These people have an overexpression of the VMAT2 gene. They're fanatics. And by other V word, we will eradicate this gene in them. Okay. That's all I'll say. Okay. This brain scan that he has here is really interesting. Listen in. Uh, so we have some, some very, very uh, remarkable data in this next slide. Uh, here we have two uh, brain scans. These are fMRIs. Uh, these are two different individuals with different levels of expression of VMAT2. Uh, on top uh, is an individual who's a religious fanatic and individual, and we've repeated this numerous times, that, that uh, has uh, high levels of VMAT2. Now, um, this individual down here who had low levels of the VMAT2 gene, this individual would uh, self-describe as, as as not particularly religious. In, in each case, uh, these individuals were, were read a religious text. Uh, this individual... Uh, okay, a light you can up. see here, different parts um, of those the, people's the brains when read religious jars. texts uh, lit up. Here. You'll specifically notice in the VMAT2 individual, the front of the brain, if you'll go back. Remember where that light receptor happens. Right, oh, woof. So, people's brains with different you know, genetics different VMAT2 genes react differently to spirituality, to religion, to belief. And by using this, these two V words, they can get rid of that front part of your brain lighting up. They can light it up with a light beam to make it not light up itself, right? Okay. Wow. I mean, we don't know who they're explaining this to. It was in 2005. It, it, it is alleged. This is the advanced group six CIA. But what is a VMAT2 gene? Let's explain. So here from geneticlifehacks.com, humans have long sought spirituality and science. What is the God VMAT2 gene? It is a neurotransmitter tr transporter encoded by the solute carrier family 18 member A2 gene. 2004, book by Dean Hammer, the gene is hypothesized to be hereditary influence towards spirituality. Now, what does it do? It is a monoamine transport gene, it packages monoamine trans neurotransmitters from the cytosol into vesicles. It packages them. Monoamine transmitters include dopamine, serotonin, adrenaline, noradrenaline, histamine, and melatonin. These transmitters are important to thinking, behavior, physical movement, pain, emotion, wakefulness, circulation. Okay. It's important that these neurotransmitters get into vesicles and released in the synapse of neurons. In the cell, it, VMAT2 facilitates the packaging and protects them. These vesicles then move to the cell membrane. Okay. Now... What does that mean? Here's a good visual of it. Through the synapses, these VMAT2 genes are literally protecting that dopamine, protecting it from what? Oxidative stress. If you'll go back and remember. Oxidative stress. Okay. Now, what is oxidative stress? It, it literally is the interaction with oxygen we think of you know trees turning brown we think of well t-shirts you know fading i'll get into those exact things later i'm foreshadowing really but it protects them and now to relate it back to the god gene it literally shields them the lord my god is a shield to protect you it it is a God gene that shields your dopamine and neurotransmitters. Newly developed VMAT2 inhibitors have possible side effects of causing or unmasking Parkinson's disease. It literally can cause type 2 diabetes. It By not having these shields, your body feels the effects. 
that's the interesting part is that there's a science to not only back to that what that guy's saying about you know uh, fanatics and things uh, it's also personally damaging right now here the soj genetic science institute has another really good article on it it's got another good visual there for you but what i want to focus on here is this article on the second page this paragraph on the second page the self-transcendence measure was shown to be heritable by classical classical twin studies conducted by lyndon eaves and nicholas martin interpreters of these studies argue that specific religious beliefs such as belief in jesus have no genetic basis and are instead memes citation needed cultural units transmitted by imitation Okay, what? I thought memes were ha-has, especially until I read this, right? The inference here is that it means something else. So, of course, I take it to the dictionary. You find memetics. Memetics sees ideas as kind of a virus. I hope I don't get that V word taken, but that's what it says here. Sometimes propagating in spite of truth or logic. The maxim is... Beliefs that survive aren't necessarily true. The rules that survive aren't necessarily fair. And rituals that survive aren't necessarily necessary. Things that survive do so because they are good at surviving. So it all starts to make sense. I start to see memes in a different light. It, they, the templates that stick around do so because they're good at surviving. They don't do so in spite of truth, but they drive cultural influence. Wow, right? I mean, I'm seeing them in a whole new light. LOL, we're talking about light right now. Um, why is it that this is this memetics is what's turned into our i can't call it anything but memes right i mean funny photos uh, why why is that word used there i if this is why it, it makes sense it, it's 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 you know more of telling the truth without ever explaining it on the part of the social narrative culture it's really really interesting to me now more of this you know light you know drop feeding it doesn't seem really to me like the way these articles are coming out now that the establishment is in control of what's being told and talked about unprecedented resolution here from SciTech daily of novel microscope pins down the miracle of molecular oxygen july 24th right here now this starts off like i was alluding to earlier why do the colors of a t-shirt fade why do you sunburn why do leaves turn brown okay uh, I'm going to explain it here in the t-shirt terms because that is a really good way to explain it. They do a great job. Oxygen is an astonishing molecule in that it is magnetic. Okay, in liquid form, sure, okay. Dye molecules, though, like what's used in t-shirts, are not magnetic because the compass needle of the electrons point opposite directions. When light shines on such a molecule, a certain light color of the light will be absorbed giving the dye its characteristic and appearance. In this process of light absorption, the energy of the light is transferred to an electron in the dye molecule, breaking the original pairing of the two electrons and allowing the compass needle to be excited and change alignment. When this process happens, the electron can no longer return to its original state. The dye molecule becomes magnetic, entering what is referred to as a triplet state. That's an important term here. International team, directed by Professor Joshua Rep, has now succeeded in revealing how this triplet energy is transferred from one single dye molecule to a single oxygen molecule. The process is important to everyday life, where many oxidative reactions proceed via the excited triplets. Okay, they have a really interesting way of doing this, using an, an atomic microscope and crossing electricity over. It's amazing that they can create forcefully, controlled-wise, this reactive, reactive process. Now... What's interesting to me is right here at the end. Besides inconvenient fading of t-shirts, such an interplay between molecular triplets, excitations is of the citral significance to a range of technology developments such as organic light emitting diodes, organic solar cells, photocatalytic energy, photosynthesis, and last bit right here, photodynamic cancer therapy. They did put it in at the end. To me, this seems like, what? This is what I want the article to be about. How does this work? Okay, so I've gone and looked that up. What is photodynamic therapy? It uses a drug activated by light called a photosynthesizer to kill cancer cells. The light can come from a laser or another source, such as LEDs. It is called PDT. It does a very effective job here, it says at least, at killing cancer cells. Now, Interestingly, UTA Chemist develops a cancer medication that uses light to destroy tumor cells from News Medical Life Sciences. Literally, the Sherry McFarlane Professor of Chemistry and her team have 
developed a chemical compound containing a transition metal, ruthenium. The ruthenium absorbs light. It produces a powerful oxygen reaction. Then the ruthenium containing molecule, light and oxygen all interact with one another. They become highly selective cancer fighting agents that do not affect surrounding healthy tissue. What don't they, they know how to fight foreign cells on their own with an, a chemical oxidative reaction. That's not the oxidative stress that we heard about earlier. Interesting. My immediate thought is, well, does it fight, you know, any, does it, does it actually just fight cancer cells? Is it that selective? Is it that smart? Well, we go here to the El Cyber public health emergency collection a systematic review of photodynamic therapy as an antiviral treatment. And you read the rest of the headline there. I am st I'm staying away from saying the word as much as I can. Photodynamic therapy can be used as potential guidance for dealing with this. Okay, well now let's go to conclusion. In vitro and in vivo studies select in a systematic review indicate that PDT is capable of photo inactivating enveloped and non-enveloped DNA and RNA viruses suggesting that PDT can potentially photo inactivate this shit we're dealing with right now. Wow. Wow. Hold on. Not to give him any credit or anything, but like, I think we'll all remember a, a ex president that got really made fun of for saying stuff about, you know, killing this with UV rays. He, he might, he might've really been onto something. I mean, this specific article was published, of course, you know, in, in February of 2021, it, it, duh, I mean, had to come out later. Couldn't have come out while it was, you know, being talked about that he said it. I just wonder here where this VMAT2 gene is, is not maybe what they're systematically going after in all of these pushes, all of these fear mongerings, all of these, you know, next next variant next strain next you you have to wonder and there's solid evidence here to stipulate and if at all people like advanced group six is behind it and if at all the reason these articles are coming out is because they've lost the narrative it, who is letting these things come out because they've been good at hiding things before is there you know as uh, our friend rumors of instinct top secret texan michael Villegas would say is this the astro high command is this greater forces at work is this the creator god co collective consciousness you know resisting standing your ground i love the connections in this episode i want to hear you guys thoughts and i will see you soon thanks